Hello and welcome to this tutorial on reflexive and time-based access lists. And these are the last two access lists you need to know for your CCNA studies. So if you've watched all the videos in this particular segment for access lists, then congratulations because we've covered a lot of material. Just like the dynamic access lists, we don't have to worry about all of the configuration details. We just need to be familiar with how these work and, and why we want to use them in certain scenarios. All right, so let's begin. A reflexive access list will enable a router to filter on a session by session basis. And we're going to see in just a minute in detail what that exactly means. But basically speaking, we get more granular control over traffic without having to manually create very large access lists. Okay, the second one, time-based access lists, they're, they're actually simpler to understand than the reflexive. All they do is they enable certain statements to be applied only during specified times. So if we want to have different rules applied during different times of the day or days of the week, then we can use a time-based access list. Okay, so how does a reflexive access list actually give us that granular control? Well, quite simply, when our user on the laptop sources some traffic going towards that web server, the router is going to make note of it. In fact, it's going to look at the session information for that traffic. In other words, it's going to take a look at the source address and the source port being used on the laptop, as well as the destination address and the destination port that we're sending the traffic to on the web server. So this is the session info. And the router is going to update its access list with a permit statement based on this uh, session information. What that means is when the web server returns traffic, the session information has to match. In other words, it's a way of kind of validating that we're getting the traffic back from the right person that we originally contacted. In other words, the correct web server is responding to us. And we're, we're going down even to the port level um, and with TCP and UDP if we wanted to in order to ensure this. Okay, so if there was someone else on here, some rogue server that tried to uh, send that traffic back instead, the router is going to block that because that session information would not match. It could have a different IP address and using a different port number. And since it would not match that initial original session, we're protected. Okay, so there's, a, there's an added security benefit by being able to automatically um, adjust our access lists with this very granular inspection of the session information. All right, so that's the reflexive access list. Now with the time-based access list, we get some different functionality from the router. Basically, we're enabled to apply certain access list statements automatically, but only during specified times. So on our router, let's say we have an access list and there are just some basic security entries in there. However, during some days, we want to prevent certain users from getting to certain websites. So we create a time range, and that time range would define the hours of the day or the days of the week that we want the, the user to be prevented from accessing that web server. And then we create some statements that we want applied to the access list during that time, and we associate those two. And so then what happens is, during that time frame, whenever that time frame starts, let's say it's Monday at 8 a.m., well, when it becomes Monday at 8 a.m., these statements are then added to our access list automatically. And then when that time range ends, they're removed. Okay, so it's a very deliberate application only during certain times of the day, and we change our access list automatically. Okay, so if you're in need of that kind of functionality, the time-based access list is perfect. Okay, so let's quickly summarize. With reflexive access lists, the source and destination packet information has to match between the initial traffic and the return traffic. And with the time-based access list, we're enabled to apply certain statements to an access list according to a specified time range. Okay? And so that's it. That is the reflexive and time-based access list. Thanks for watching.